Hey, yo everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video, and today we're going to be doing my Andrew Cutter Picks of the Weeks, along with any news and updates. Now, for those of you that are new to my channel or know nothing about this video series, basically my Andrew Cutter Picks of the Weeks is where I take a look at this week in DC Comics. Then I select the comic that I enjoyed the most and declare it my Andrew Cutter Pick of the Week. I will also talk about any news or updates I have to pertain to my channel or anything in general. And we do have quite a bit of news and updates for this week. So without any further ado, let's actually get into what comics I picked up this week for DC Comics. Uh, surprisingly, this week Justice League wasn't in the poll list. It's actually been pushed back to next week. So it's actually not going to be here. Random, but I thought I'd just let you guys know that. So anyways, I got Batman, issue number five, and all these will be issue number fives, and here's a variant. Uh, Wonder Woman, Nightwing, Catwoman, Supergirl, Birds of Prey, and then finally Red Hood and the Outlaws. I believe that's seven titles, I could be wrong. Uh, but yes, this week for DC Comics was a stellar week. Uh, all the comics were good, all the comics were enjoyable. Uh, again, another testament to how good the DC uh, relaunch is and how it's really actually paying off. Uh, I think the lowest comic this week, or the comic that didn't do quite as well, was surprisingly Wonder Woman, which has been a stellar comic. However, when I say it hasn't been doing as well as the other comics, that only means it got like a 3.5 out of 5 stars, where everything else got either a 4 or a 5 out of 5 stars. Uh, but overall, good week. However, without a shadow of a doubt, the best comic this week for me, and the comic that's my Andrew Cutter pick of the week, would go to Batman issue number 5. Uh, Batman was actually knocked off as the Andrew Cutter pick of the week last month, um, and Wonder Woman had his place, now they're switching around again. Uh, Scott Snyder is just again and again and again showing how good he is with Batman. I really like how the pages kept on turning, and I really like the psychological aspect and really making Batman feel vulnerable. I'm sure when Batman gets out of this, he will be stronger person, but going into this, it, it looks dark for the Dark Knight, no pun intended. Um, other comics this week, uh, Wonder Woman was, uh, like I said, it was good. Nightwing was good. Uh, Catwoman was really, 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 really fun. Supergirl was the best issue of the series thus far. Uh, Birds of Prey is continuing to impress me, um, and that was really good. And then Red Hood and the Outlaws was holding its own. So yes, that is my Andrew Cutter Picks of the Weeks. Um, on a whole, like I said, it was a good week. Uh, we've been getting quite a bit of good weeks lately. Um, so as for news and updates, I think the biggest thing to talk about this week would be the announcement for Resident Evil 6. Uh, you can go to IGN.com, that's where I got my news and information about it. But the trailer for Resident Evil 6 is up, the video game. I don't want people to be confused and think it's a movie, but then it would be the fifth movie. So, anyways, uh, I am pumped for this for a few reasons. Uh, first and foremost is it looks beautiful. Uh, but most import importantly is my favorite Resident Evil character is going to be in it, Leon S. Kennedy. Um, throughout this, you seem to play as Leon S. Kennedy or Cred uh, Chris Redfield. And um, they're both in separate areas. And the pres this is set 10 years after Raccoon City's incident. The president wants to release uh, what happened to the general public, blow this thing open, but something goes wrong. Another outbreak happens, and Leon has to take care of it. While Chris is in, I believe, they said China and taking care of an outbreak out there. Uh, it seems Ashley, the president's daughter, might be in it. There is a blonde uh, female in this that looks and sounds similar to Ashley. And uh, possibly, possibly, and I could be wrong, this is just my brain speculating, uh, Stephen from Code Veronica could be back because there is a uh, bio-enhanced soldier going around that uh, has a screwed up hand that looks very similar to the skin tone that Steven had, but this is just probably speculation on my part. Uh, but the game looks really, really, really good. And does anyone else think that they're trying to make Leon look like the, uh, the brother from 
Supernatural that has uh, the longer hair. I know the one with the shorter hair is going to be playing him in the next Resident Evil movie, but it, it's kind of interesting how he looks very similar, how they're making him look very similar to that uh, actor. I forget his name. His name escapes me. Um, I don't watch Supernatural. It's a good show. Uh, my friend is obsessed with it, but I have not watched it in, oh god, I think I saw it just the first season. Anywho, um, yeah, Resident Evil 6 looks good, but another reason why I think it's going to be good is because it's not going to be that full-on action game that we had from Resident Evil 5. I think it's going to be more akin to Resident Evil 4, my personal favorite Resident Evil, uh, where it's going to be a good blend of horror, survival, and action. There's nothing wrong with having action in a Resident Evil game, but you need to have survival and you need to have horror. And I think there's going to be that in this game. I think one of the things, uh, well... Never mind. I was going to say something, but I'm not going to say it because it, it was it, it is a false statement. But uh, I was going to say that uh, one of the reasons why Resident Evil isn't scary anymore is because us as individuals are um, probably desensitized to horror. But that's not the truth because horror, if done right, it, it no matter what you you're going to be affected by it. But yes, Resident Evil Six has been announced and it looks like it is going to be good. Still early to really see. For all we know, it could be a bad game, but um, hopefully it won't be. Um, like I said, games can surprise you. When Skyward Sword first was announced at E3, what, 2009? Uh, I was very skeptical, very hesitant, and I did not like the look of the game. I did not like the idea of the game. But the game has turned out to be my favorite game of all time. So, just because you have impressions going in, you never know what could happen later. But yes, I would recommend going to IGN.com and you can see the full trailer there. Excuse me. As for other news and updates, a random, uh, gonna blog a little, random thing is, is that, uh, when I went to my comic store, this is how great my comic book guy is. I've been trying to pick up all the variants for the Batman issues, uh, but when Batman issue number one came out, I neglected to get the first variant, um, and it's been impossible to find. However, my comic book guy, being the man he is, went out of his way and got me one of the variants. That's pretty awesome. Um, another thing is that I am still in a big Mario phase, but I'm switching from Mario and I'm starting to go into Metroid. Uh, the games that I have played for Metroid so far is Metroid Prime 1, 2, uh, 3. I'm currently playing 3 and I played the original Metroid. And then while at my comic store, I picked up Metroid Zero Mission, which I just killed Mother Brain and now I crash land with no suit. And I picked up Metroid Fusion, which I'm going to play after Metroid Zero Mission. Um, and then I'm planning to pick up Super Metroid at some point, And I'm also going to pick up Metroid The Other M. Or it should be called Metroid The Other M. That, that was my impression of Samus from The Other M. I know what I'm getting into when I, I'm going into the other M. I'm curious to see how Metroid Fusion is, because a lot of people say it's a really good game. Um, I'm enjoying Metroid Zero Mission. I think it's a good remake. I, I like remakes if they're done well. Let me give you an example. A remake that is done well would be something like... Um, Let's take Zero Mission. Zero Mission is a remake that is done well. It takes what's good about the game and it improves upon it, but it doesn't take away from it. Um, Pokemon, Fire Red, Leaf Green, great remakes. They take the core good things about the games, update them, and release them. Bad remakes. Um, the special edition sour stuff that's being released. Adding too much clutter to the movies takes away from the experience. Having um, Darth Vader watching his son getting electrocuted and slowly contemplating whether or not he should save him and allowing the good to come into him and then switching it to him going, No! is bad. Um, and although that's not really a remake, that's remastering. But you get what I'm saying. I like remakes when they're done right. Or modernizations when they're done right. They can go horribly wrong, but uh, Zero Mission I'm enjoying. It's a quick game. Yeah, I, I played two hours of it, and I'm already past Mother Brain, but it is a good remake. So I'm in a big Metroid mood. 
Uh, I'm going to probably, like I said, I'm going to play through Fusion, and I'm going to try to see if I can get my hands on Super Metroid, because that's the next one I want to play. And then once I beat Metroid Prime 3, which I'm playing with my buddy, I will go into Metroid the other M. Wow. Uh, the probably last on my list is Metroid Hunters, and then Mon uh, Metroid uh, Prime 2, no, Metroid 2, The Return of Samus. Which I actually have a funny story, which I'll take a few seconds to talk about. Metroid uh, 2, The Return of Samus, uh, my cousin had it. And this is just how silly and stupid I was as a kid. My cousin had it, and he let me play it a few times. And then I, and he was much older than me. He's in his 30s, and I'm in my 20s. So uh, he, he was probably a teenager, and I was, I don't know, 6, maybe. Um, but he let me play Metroid 2, The Return of Samus. And then I kept on asking him to play it. And finally he said, you know what I did is I buried it in the sand a foot deep. Because we had a cottage up in New Hampshire. Uh, and we have kind of a beach up there. Kind of a beach. Sand. And uh, I went up there and I dug all throughout the sand looking. And this wasn't a small patch of sand. This was a huge area of sand. And I spent so many days looking for it. Uh, thinking that it was actually buried underneath. Pretty silly of me, isn't it? Yes. So, uh, yeah, I'm in a big Metroid phase. Uh, I like Metroid. I think it's a good series. I'm not the best at it. I'll admit that. Give me a Zelda game. Give me a Pokemon game. Uh, give me a Resident Evil game. I'll blast through them like it's nothing. Because I'm good at those games. Uh, Metroid, for some reason, I've always had a little bit of a challenge with. And, and not like the games are overly that challenging. But, like, I've had um, Met Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. I needed help to get through that with my buddy. I could go through Metroid Prime 1, fine. I could go through Metroid Zero Mission, fine. But Metroid Prime 2, I had trouble with, so it's kind of weird. Um, and I'm currently playing through Mario Sunshine. Whew! A lot of stuff I just said there. Um, but yeah, uh, Resident Evil 6 is a big thing that is uh, coming out. Oh, another thing I should probably talk about is with the Batman titles, they're going to be doing a big crossover. Everyone already knows about this, so I really don't need to talk about it. But Night of the Owls, it's going to be a huge crossover dealing with the Court of Owls. Um, so we're going into our first crossover event, but it's a self-contained Batman one. But I am looking forward to it. So, yes, that's about all that's on my mind. I kind of really wanted to say that uh, I really wanted to uh, tell people that I was in a Metroid mood. I don't know why. I guess it's because I've been looking for Metroid Zero Mission for the longest time, and it just happened to be at my comic store. They sell a lot of old games there, and new games, as well as my comics. It has comic stuff, it has action figures, it has video games, it has everything you would need. I can go there more than I need to go to GameStop or something. I'll go to GameStop if it's a brand spanking new game, but if it's a year or older, I'll go to my uh, comic store because they're going to have it. Plain, flat, and simple at a decent price. So, yes. Uh, anyways, what do you guys think about Resident Evil 6? Do you think it'll be a good game? Do you think it'll be a bad game? Um... I mean, it's way too early to tell, but based on Camp Comp's uh, performance lately, for all we know, we could have Resident Evil 6, Resident Evil 6 Gold Edition, Resident Evil 6 Super Gold Edition, Resident Evil 6 Super Gold Arcade Edition. Ugh. Camp Comp just likes taking money and making it bleed. Uh, but yes. Let me know your opinions on this stuff and uh, what your picks of the week is. Uh, by the way, there was a subscriber... Uh, two things I wanted to say. One uh, subscriber or one viewer uh, pointed out that Apollo is not uh, Zeus's brother. I said that and I was incorrect. Um, usually I'm good with Greek mythology, but for some reason I had a brain fart and I forgot that Apollo is actually not Zeus's brother. It's his son. So, sorry about that. And someone else pointed out, which is a good catch, is that if you look at Red Hood and the Outlaws, um, there is a demonite in the picture, or at least a faint looking of a demonite. Um, I don't know if that is an Easter egg or not, but that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good catch. I mean, you really have to use your imagination, but it's there. Uh, so yeah. Someone also said Crooks or Crocs or whatever his name is, is going to be the fourth member of the Outlaws. Bloody hell. Anywho, I'm going to end this video here. I've been uh, yapping on too long. Uh, this is Andrew saying peace out for now.